And so this video is going to look at conversions. Um, so your book calls this the factored label method. I tend to refer to it as dimensional analysis. In the end, it's really all the same way of talking about doing some problem solvings and converting units from one to another. Um, this might be one of the more important uh, topics, uh, if not definitely in this first chapter, if not for the whole semester. This stuff is going to apply basically throughout a lot of what we do um, in Gen Chem, in the Gen Chem section when it comes to problem solving. So make sure you get this down, get it down in this chapter, and you'll be able to use it in subsequent chapters. Um, and it's really a pretty simple concept. Um, the idea here is you take your original quantity and you multiply it by some conversion factor, which we'll talk about in more depth here in just a second, and it allows you to um, get to a unit that you want to be in. So the idea here is you're converting from one unit to another unit. Um, so the idea here is let's say you have a mass in pounds and you want to convert it to kilograms, right? You want to change your units. So conversion factors are usually written as equalities. And we've actually looked at some of these earlier whenever we looked at like the metric conversions. For instance, we had one that said um, 1,000 meters is equal to one kilometer. Or we had one that said, you know, 100 centimeters is equal to one meter, right? So those are all conversion factors. And usually you see them written as equalities. However, another way to say that is to write them kind of in the term as a fraction. So here you're going to say there's 2.2 pounds is equal to 1 kilogram. This way, down here, you kind of read it a little bit different. There's going to be 2.2 pounds per kilogram. Or you can say there's 1 kilogram per 2.2 pounds. You're saying the exact same thing, you're just writing it differently. And so even though this and that are the same, right, so these are going to be the same conversions, we have to pick the right one to use whenever we do a conversion. And the way that you do that is basically by setting up your mass so that your units cancel out. So let's look at what we mean um, by that. So I'll come back to that table here in just a second. So the idea here using this um, dimensional analysis or the factor label method is that your units are going to be treated just like numbers. So in other words, just like whenever we talked earlier about how we multiply, um, if we had like 4 centimeters times 3 centimeters, we would say that the answer was 12 centimeters squared. We would multiply um, the units. Well, in this case, we're going to multiply and divide the units just like numbers. And we're going to get most of our units to cancel out. So let's do it. Let me set up just kind of a general math question like this. So if we take 4 times 3 divided by 4 times 4 divided by 6 times 6 divided by 2. So if we were to do this math, and you're just looking at the math without typing everything in on a calculator, what you should be able to do is say, okay, 4 and 4 cancel out. 6 and 6 cancel out, right? So you're kind of left with 3 times 4 up top and 2 on the bottom, and that would give you an answer that's 6, right? So this would equal 6. So the idea here is if something is in the numerator and it's in the denominator, we can cancel it out. That's what's going to happen in our math here. So if we wanted to convert 130 pounds into kilograms, the way we would do this is kind of what's shown here. You have 130 pounds. You're going to multiply by 1 kilogram per 2.20 pounds, and it's going to give you 59 kilograms. Let me kind of write this out. You're going to start with your known quantity, 130 pounds. You're going to multiply it. You want to put pounds on the bottom so that they cancel out. We want to convert it to kilograms up top, and we know that our conversion is 2.20 pounds per 1 kilogram. Whenever you do the math, the pounds in the numerator cancels with pounds in the denominator. It's going to leave you with kilograms, and the answer here is going to be 59 kilograms. Okay, so that is the gist of how you do these types of problems. You start with something that is known that is not a conversion factor. In other words, it's not going to be something per something else. It's just going to be 
kind of what you're given. And I've seen people say you start with that number over one, right? Because then you can take any number you want and put it over one, like dividing something by one doesn't change the number. You don't need to do this, but you just need to know that this 130 pounds that we start with here really starts as the numerator. And that way you're going to want to put in the denominator right next to it something with the unit of pounds so that you can cancel out pounds here and pounds there to leave you with kilograms. All right, so let me go back to the previous um, slide that shows the table. So these show you a whole bunch of conversions and equivalents. Um, I want you to memorize two of them. One that we just looked at is this pounds to kilograms or kilograms to pounds. So 2.2 pounds is equal to one kilogram. And I also want you to know centimeters to inches. So those two with the asterisks and that I have um, uh, circled or drawn on there are the only two I want you to memorize. If I ask you to do any other conversions, um, like for anything that's on this chart, I'll actually give you the conversion. But most of the conversions I'll give you on test will be centimeters to inches, kilograms to pounds, or they will be metric conversions, like which, what we talked about um, earlier in the chapter, and you do have to memorize those, right, from kilo down through micro. So you have to be able to do those conversions as well. All right, so know these particular conversions. Um, so density is going to be uh, something that is commonly going to show up as a conversion factor. So density is a physical property that relates mass to volume. So a lot of you have probably heard, you know, density is mass over volume or D equals MV. And I've seen students come up with a triangle that shows like how if you know two of the things, how you can figure up the third. I don't like memorizing or, or doing any tricks like that. Um, what I'd like to do is put this in the context of dimensional analysis. So this just goes to show you, right, you can convert volume to mass and you can multiply by the density. And you can go from uh, mass to volume if you divide by the density. And here it shows the inverse of density. But the one thing you'll notice here is the way that this shows up is by canceling out the units. So if I were just to simply say something has a density of oh, let's say 0 0.5 grams per milliliter, right? So that's my density. And let's say that um, I had, uh, let's, start, let's do a, a problem where we convert mass to volume. So let's say we have um, 10 grams of something, and we want to figure 10 grams of a chemical that has a density of 0.5 grams per milliliter, and we want to know how many milliliters we have. We want to know the volume. So we start with 10 grams. Well, my next step, I know I have to put grams on the bottom. So looking at my conversion factor here, I know I have 0.5 grams per milliliter. So I can write 0.5 grams at the bottom per milliliter up top. Grams cancel. And now I can say I have 10 times milliliters. So the way I do the math here is I take 10 times milliliters, and then I'm going to divide it by 0.5. So you basically take everything in your numerator, you multiply them together, and then you divide by the stuff in your denominator. This answer is just going to give me 20 milliliters. Now, we will see problems where there takes multiple steps, where we have to do multiple conversions, and you can keep doing them one step after another um, to continue canceling out these units. And again, the math is always going to say, I'll multiply everything in the numerator, and then divide by everything in the denominator. 